Hello again, everyone. In this video, I will be talking to you about dominant seven chords, what they are, how they're labeled, why they sound so special, and why we call it a seven in the first place. But first, if you remember our conversation from week three, you'll know that each note in a scale has a name associated with it in addition to a number. Scale degree one is known as the tonic. Scale degree two, the supertonic. Scale degree three, the median, etc., etc. So what we are concerned about today is the dominant, which is the fifth of a scale. Using C major again, I'll just draw a C down here as a frame of reference, we want G. G is our dominant, the fifth of C, and we're going to be using G to build our chords just for the sake of this lecture. I'm going to start by building the main chord, the the root, the third, and the fifth. The root I'm going to make green. That's a terrible note. Let me try that again. The root I'm going to make green. The third I'm going to make blue. And the fifth I'm going to make a bright pink. Okay. Now the distance between this, of course, that is a third. The, oops. Let's give the colors consistent. The distance between the root and the note above, that is our third. The distance between the root and this top note, that is our fifth. But there is another note that we need to add in order to make this a dominant seven. And I'm going to make that orange. So what you do to add the seventh is just go a third above your fifth. And you add it like that. The distance between your root and this note is seven. So from G to F, that is a seventh interval. So that's why we labeled it as such. So now we have our dominant seven chord. Again, dominant because it's built on G, the fifth scale degree of C major. Labeling a dominant seven chord is extremely simple. What you want is the appropriate Roman numeral. So in this case, a five. And then you want the appropriate figured base. So then we would add a seven on top. Now again, figured bass indicates whatever interval is above the bottom note in your chord. So in this case, our G has a seventh above that, which is F. This is root position. And I'll get to the other inversions that you can have of a dominant seven in the next part. But let me finish this part by explaining what the special relationship is between this chord and our tonic chord. Let me write that in, and that will make the point even more clear. So dominant seventh chords, if you remember from our discussion of chord progressions, I believe that was in week seven of part one, um, there are certain harmonies, certain chords that flow better one after the other. They flow better into each other. And the strongest relationship um, is between a dominant chord and a tonic chord. Dominant always wants to try to go back to tonic. There's a natural inclination to get back home. So this is our home chord. Um, and the seventh, if you were to add this to a regular dominant chord, it increases that tendency even more so. And that is because of two special notes within the five chord. The third of the five chord and the seventh. The third, in this case, again, we're using G. This is B. The third of a G dominant seven is B. Now in C major, B is our leading tone, scale degree seven. Seven wants to go back to one. And so this uh, third of the dominant seven will try to go back to the root of the one chord. It's going to resolve upwards to the C. The seventh 
of our dominant seventh chord. It's a similar deal. The seventh of this wants to resolve to the third of the tonic. So there are two notes that have a tendency to go back to the tonic. And these are called our tendency tones. Very appropriate. So to recap, a dominant seven chord has a greater tendency to go to one than a regular dominant chord because there are two notes within the chord that strongly lead into two notes of the tonic chord. The third of a dominant seven chord wants to go to the root of a tonic, and then the seventh of a dominant seven chord wants to resolve down to the third of a tonic. And these are called tendency tones. Okay, and that will conclude part one. Stay tuned for part two, where I will show you the different inversions that you can have of a dominant seven chord and show you how to label those with figured bass. See you then.